Hey there once again YouTube. How you doing today? This is my second video I've uploaded today. Uh, my last one earlier this morning was the May 2019 monthly volcano report. It might be the last volcano report I have the time to do, so go check that out if you wish. But don't worry, I'll still be doing videos about concerning activity and blog posts and stuff like that. Um, there have been also two channels I have been supporting lately, the NW Geology Guy and Morning Dew. Both the links to both the channels are in the description box below, so go show your support if you feel like it. And by the way, don't forget to check out my website. Remember, it can show you how to find, access, and analyze seismic and GPS data, how to understand the many plots that people use, and contains over a thousand seismic plots pertaining to a great many different earthquake swarms and events. So a link to that is in the description box below, right under my email address. I just had to put out this video today. Let's go to California real quick. We are earthquake.usgs.gov with all magnitudes reported by USGS for the past 24 hours, the past day. Since, let's see, I'm going to say, all right, right now is 7.34 p.m. Pacific Time, June 5th, 2019. And we're going down here. The Glen Avon Swarm has somewhat calmed down a little bit. Here, let me turn on U.S. Faults just real quick. Now, in the vicinity of the Glen Avon Swarm, and again, it has calmed down just a little bit, but still are seeing a good amount of earthquakes. Remember, we were seeing almost 120, almost 150 in a 24-hour period, right when the swarm is reaching its peak. But we see the swarm still has not calmed down. The thing that I think is very, very strange is that it is constrained in such a tight space. Do you notice that? Look at the tight space. Very, very small cluster. But a lot of earthquakes involved. The largest in the past 24 hours, which would have been, let's see, that's 5.20 p.m. Pacific time, June 5th, 2019. But... In UTC, remember UTC is ahead of us, that'd be 020 UTC, June 6th. There's a 3.1 and 4.1 kilometers in depth. And then we had a 2.4, 2.3, 2.2, 2.2. And notice all the depths are basically, uh, there was one at 5.6 kilometers. Let's see, I think that's the deepest. Well, what was the deepest of the past 24 hours? Let's see, at 5, 7. There was 7 kilometers right there. All of them seem to be more shallow, a lot more shallow than 10 kilometers, which is strange. Whoa. That was weird. What happened there? That was, okay, well, uh, that's very weird. Um, so let's go to the SEDC website real quick. I'll get to the two magnitude 4.3 earthquakes that struck recently. Uh, here's about the Glen Avon Swarm. SEDC is the Southern California, actually it's SCSN, uh, but the SEDC is for the data center for the seismic data. Southern California Seismic Network, Glen Avon Earthquake Swarm as of May 25th. Oh, that's when it started, actually. May 25th, 2019. Still has not ended yet. Posted on June 3rd, 2019. So about two days ago or so. We're actively updating this post with information. Swarms of small magnitude events are relatively common in this area. In my opinion, not this extreme and not in this close of an area. A very small cluster, but still a lot of events. Very tight area. But still, it's very interesting. Extending from Riverside to Chino, based on the past historic recordings, this swarm is only expected to generate events of magnitude less than 4.0, and volcanic events occur usually less than magnitude 4.5 and more shallow than 10 kilometers in depth. Now, I'm not in any way saying this is volcanic in nature 100%, because I can't say that 100%, guys. And plus, there's no active GPS instruments in this area, so we cannot tell if the ground is swelling or deflating. So we really cannot tell exactly what is going on. I have not been able to find any low-frequency volcanic or harmonic tremor, which usually precedes intrusion events, or actually, uh, excuse me, accompanies them. So I don't know. It's very interesting. I'm thinking this is not just tectonic in nature because of the characteristics of the which way it's oriented, and just such a tight space, with, which in the past and other locations around the world, I've seen to be caused by intrusion events, but even, let's say this even was an intrusion event, it would be a small amount of magma. I mean, if it, if it even was magma at all, it, I mean, I'm thinking maybe some type of fluid or maybe some gas. I don't know. Maybe it is just tectonic in nature, but I don't know. I'm just putting those possibilities out there. The swarm falls within the northeast trending Fontana seismicity trend, which has no, look at this, no major map fault. Huh. That's very interesting, but relatively abundant small seismicity indicating local network of small fractures and faults. Very interesting. 
Earthquakes in this area are probably related to the tectonic loading of the nearby San Jacinto and San Andreas Faults. Now that might be true, but if you look right here, if I zoom all the way out, notice, uh, I'll take a second, up here, this is the San Andreas. See this red line right here? This is the San Andreas Fault. If my, yeah, see? San Bernardino's mountain section, San Andreas is right here. Now, the orientation of this earthquake swarm occurred in a tight space right down here near South Fontana and, uh, what is that, Glen Avon. And when it first started, it was oriented this way. It was oriented from southwest to northeast. Now it's oriented north to south. Very interesting how it's doing that. But notice how it is running perpendicular, not parallel, to the San Andreas. Uh, the earthquake swarm orientation, if this was caused by unloading from San Andreas or San Jacinto, I would think that it would be parallel. I don't know for sure, though, but we're just going to take a look at some of the seismic data in just a second. The earthquake swarm started on May 25th, 2019, and has recorded over 430 events so far. Largest event so far was a 3.2. Let's see what was today's. was a 3.1, so just sm slightly smaller. Number of events, let's see, do, 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 do. events are relatively shallow for Southern California, contributing to several of them being felt. Earthquake swarms are characterized as clusters of events in space and time that have no obvious main shock. Very interesting. Huh. Previous swarms in this area, swarms in this area have been recorded back through the 1980s when our instrumentation network became sensitive enough to detect these smaller events. Since our records began in 1932, we've had 18 events of magnitude 4 or greater within 10 kilometers of today's event. Most of these events above magnitude 4 lie on or near the major adjacent faults, the San Jacinto and San Andreas. Notice the Glen Avon swarm. Remember, San Andreas is right here. Sierra Madre, Madre, San Jacinto, Fontana Seismicity Zone. Very interesting how it's perpendicular to most of these faults in this area. Isn't that very strange? I think that's very, very odd. Very weird. Going down, and they do have some videos showing the progression of the earthquake swarm right here. Sorry, guys, I know the detail isn't good, but here's the progression of the Glen Avon earthquake swarm. Notice it started right down here again. San Andreas is up here, so perpendicular from the southwest to the northeast. Notice that? Very interesting. And that's how it progressed. Whoa, look at that. Oh, ha <laughs> ha, bunch of Fox News. Okay. Yeah, let's go forward just a little bit. Very interesting. Look at that. And then all of a sudden, boom, out of nowhere, right down here. Right down here. Wow, look at that. That is pretty crazy, guys. That's pretty crazy. So this is a very, very, intri very intriguing earthquake swarm. Let's take a look at some of the seismic data just for the past 24 hours just to see if we could see anything good. But first, here's the event page for the magnitude 3.1 that struck not too long ago near Glen Avon. There's another interesting burst in seismicity as part of this earthquake swarm. Seems to be starting to end, but I don't know. I don't know. It seems like it's still going. 254 people reported feeling it. Mod minor to moderate shaking, not too bad. Arrival time, the closest seismic station, they say, is RCUHNZ, but we're going to use the channel code HHZ, which they do have for that station, and let's check it out the seismic program swarm. Actually, my bad, guys, to use station RVR instead of RCU, but RVR still is pretty much right at the earthquake epicenter, so we should get a good look at how earthquakes are progressing for this earthquake swarm. And we do see some earthquakes right here. And remember, I did another video about this just a few days ago. Interesting to note how a lot of these earthquakes in this swarm barely have any strong low frequencies at all. The main power is with between about, I'm going to say, 10 to 25 hertz. Very interesting because usually we see lower frequencies with earthquakes. Just for you guys, just saying, this earthquake and this earthquake might be related to the Glen Avon Swarm, but those two earthquakes that you see right here, this one and this one, were the two magnitude 4.3 earthquakes that struck San Clemente Island off the coast of California. Not too, too far from this earthquake swarm, actually. So very interesting seismicity as of late. There's one of the larger events. I'm going to say probably maybe like a 1.5 or so. Extremely high frequencies, barely any lower frequencies at all, as you can see with the spectrogram. Let's go all the way down. Let's check out the dominant frequencies of this event, just for an example, and you'll see... Now, this one does have some strong lower frequencies. It does. Uh, but you can tell it usually peaks at about 10 hertz. Very, very interesting. Let's go to this real quick right here. See? Barely any lower frequencies at all. Now, let's go back to the spectrogram. 
Not seeing any low frequency harmonic or volcanic tremor, which is a good sign. And it doesn't matter. You may call me crazy for looking at that just east of Los Angeles. I don't care where an earthquake, I don't care if an earthquake swarm occurs in space. <laughs> I'm still going to look for low frequency harmonic or volcanic tremor or any low frequency earthquakes indicative of volcanic activity. Because I have learned that magma can pop up absolutely anywhere it wants to. Period. Period. I mean, wherever it wants to go and it finds a weak spot, it will go. As of the most recent seismicity, I believe this was the magnitude 3.1 that they reported just a little bit ago. 020 UTC on the 6th. Yes, this is the magnitude 3.1 right here. Notice the downwards going P waves showing, what was that, dilatation, I believe. That's very interesting. Going right here. Some very strange earthquakes as part of this earthquake swarm. Very, very odd. Very, very odd. So, again, let's go through not seeing any low frequency harmonic volcanic tremor. That's a good sign, but you never know. You never know. Call me crazy. Everyone's going to call me crazy, but I still like to look out for volcanic events, even in non-volcanic areas. Because seriously, it's better to be prepared, guys. It's better... Well, what's that saying? It's better to have something and not need it than to need it and not have it, right? It's pretty much the same concept, basically. <laughs> yep, not seeing anything much right there. So the swarm does continue in the Glen Avon area, though a little bit in a little bit of a diminished form. Now let's get to the earthquakes that occurred near San Clemente Island. Very interesting. Almost an earthquake swarm in that area as well. So let's go check that out. So this is kind of strange. As of 7.50 p.m. Pacific time, June 5th, 2019, in the past hour, there have been no reported earthquakes except for one little teeny tiny earthquake up in Alaska and Canada, up here. Very interesting. All of a sudden, just went quiet. Isn't that weird? Let me turn on, let's see, let's do newest first. There we go. Oh, never mind. I am wrong once again. The bigger events were hiding the reported events. I am wrong. Never mind. There have been earthquakes that have been reported. My bad, guys. My bad. Okay, going down, we do see another recent earthquake reported for Glen Avon in that area. That's been seeing an increase in seismicity. One little strange earthquake up here near, well, how do you say the Entiat? Is it say, is it called Entiat or Entiat? <laughs> Don't know how to say it, but it's 0.7 and negative 1.1 kilometers in depth. Going all the way down. Let's talk about this. Now, notice the close proximity. Notice right here, San Clemente Island. Right here is the Glen Avon earthquake swarm. The San Clemente earthquakes occurred just to the southwest of Glen Avon. Of course, it is kind of far away, but geologically speaking, it is somewhat close. And I believe we do have a United States Naval Base right on this area right here. And notice we do have multiple faults, San Clemente Fault right here, running all throughout along this area. And apparently volcanic rocks have been found on this island right here. So it is very possible. It's a volcanic island in nature. Do, don't know that for sure, though. Don't know that for sure. But just saying that that's what they found. Um, we do have five reported earthquakes for today, today a 4.3 at 8.4 kilometers in depth. Apparently, it was pretty strong to the people on San Clemente Island. Very interesting. Look at this. About, I'm going to say, a little less than four hours later, we had another 4.3, same size, same depth, too. 4.3, 4.3, 8.4, 8.4. That's very interesting. Then about five minutes later, we had a 2.6 at 7.3 kilometers in depth. Then a 2.9 at 7.5 kilometers in depth, getting a little bit larger. A little bit deeper and then later on many hours later i'm going to say probably five six hours later we did see a magnitude 3.3 at 6.1 kilometers in depth in this location right here so we have been seeing an interesting increase in seismicity in california after weeks and months of not silence but just low seismic activity very low seismic activity and all of a sudden it just heated right up so let's take a look at these earthquakes from the closest seismic station possible Oh, my bad. I did it again. But first, here again, here's the magnitude 4.3. The first one at 8.4 kilometers in depth. 549 people reported feeling it. No economic losses or fatalities, of course. There's the moment tensor right there. Apparently, there was a tsunami warning just very quickly, but it definitely, I highly doubt that any tsunami could come of this. Go into the Did You Feel It map. Let's see how strong the shaking was reported. Let's go all the way down here. Zoom all the way in. In the green. So I'm not seeing any yellow. Not seeing any yellow, but a lot of people felt this earthquake, guys. A lot of people. A lot of people. So, let's go to origin. Let's go all the way down. Origin. Go to phases. Click arrival time once. Let's see. I do not want to use that. Let's use ABC in the CI network. Short period vertical. The CI network resides under the SCDC. 
which is the Southern, Cal uh, Southern California Earthquake Data Center. So CI, what was it? A ABC. Let's go here. ABC. Short period vertical. No location code given. That's the good time range. The link has been built. Click it. It'll download. Did it download? Yes, it did. All right. Let's open this up in the Seismic Program Swarm. But first, sorry guys, I know, I know, I'm going to get swarm in just a second. But first, let's look at what S, uh, the SCSN, which is the data center, actually SCDC is the data center for SCSN. So it's the same, the same group, guys, same group. All right, June 5th, 2019, depth 720 kilometers. Uh, let's see, those were the recent events. Aftershocks. So remember, there are two 4.3s. Remember, there are two 4.3s, a 2.8, and a 2.6, I believe, and then a 3.3. So, as of June 5th, 2019, 7.40 a.m. Pacific Time, there have been no aftershocks recorded. Huh? Did they really just say that? I'm so confused. I'm just Because I swear to God, there were aftershocks, as you will see in a second. Aftershocks may be expected in the next few days. The largest expected is approximately one magnitude unit smaller than the main shock, and that is what we have seen, which would be the 2.6, 2.8, and 3.3. I believe those are aftershocks, I believe. There's a small chance, about 5% chance, that a larger earthquake could occur, with the likelihood decreasing as time moves on. Since our records began in 1932, notice that, 1932, We've had four events of magnitude four or greater within 10 kilometers of today's event. So really, these types of these types of earthquakes in this area in San Clemente Island are somewhat rare, somewhat, because there's since 1932 there's only been four events of magnitude four or greater in this area. I mean that's that's pretty low, guys. That's pretty low. But notice this: they were not greater than magnitude five. So 4.3 might seem somewhat small, right? But for this area, it is pretty large because the largest historic event was a magnitude 4.6 on February 13th, 1952. That's very interesting. But we had two 4.3s today, two of them in one day. Don't know if that's happened before. The most recent historic event was a magnitude 4.1 on November 10th, 2014. So this isn't the craziest, but it's close to the craziest for San Clemente Island off the coast of Southern California. Nearby faults is the San Clemente Fault Zone. Yes, I highly trust and I highly believe that this is tectonic in nature. That is what I truly believe. The Glen Avon Swarm has... I do have some questions about that earthquake swarm due to the depths and the characteristics and the orientation of the swarm. But this, in my opinion, is definitely tectonic in nature. Let's see. Links to USGS earthquake point, uh, below are the waveform data associated with these events. We don't have to look at this because we are going to look at the waveform data in the seismic program swarm. Down here. Okay, so let's go check it out in the seismic program swarm. All right, here we have one of the closest seismic stations possible to this earthquake swarm that I would like to use. Short period vertical ABC in the CI network. No location code given. I believe, let's see, what was the arrival time for this station, ABC? Only 9.4 seconds. So it's pretty close to the epicenter. Pretty close. These are not earthquakes, as you can see. I know that the Glen Avon swarm has higher frequencies with barely any lower frequencies, but these... Do not look like earthquakes in my opinion. They are emergent. Notice how they emerge, slowly build. Those are not earthquakes. Of course, seismic events can emerge, but in my opinion, that looks like surface noise or some type of surface event. Not seeing anything there. Boom! Here's the first magnitude 4.3 at 8.4 kilometers in depth. They said they could not find any aftershocks. Well, they did not do a frequency filter. Let's do a frequency filter of 3 hertz. High pass enabled. 8 to the 8th power, 3 hertz. Press OK. Okay, so now that we've gotten rid of the stronger surface waves from the earthquake, let's go to waveforms. Notice we do see an aftershock clearly. A clear, blatant aftershock right after the earthquake. So, I don't know why they said there was no aftershock when there obviously was. There we go, the filter is not on anymore. Again, this is the magnitude 4.3 at 8.4 kilometers in depth. Here it is right here. On this station, we see a downward going P wave showing dilatation. On this station going forward, we see, I don't know, maybe an aftershock right there. Don't know for sure. Let's see, 1036, 1047. So this is before the earthquake. We see an earthquake right here, a somewhat small one with some lower frequencies, but that could be a one little tiny foreshock. That could possibly be a little tiny foreshock to the magnitude 4.3. And then there was nothing, no earthquakes, nothing at all for the longest time, for a few hours. Then, boom! 
we see the next earthquake, which was exactly the same size, almost near the exact same location, pretty much at the exact same depth. So very, very intriguing. Let's go to the waveforms real quick. Again, downwards going P wave, just barely showing dilatation. Very interesting. Basically the same exact type of earthquake. But two in the same day. I'm unsure if that has ever happened before. The largest ever being in this area being a 4.6. These were two 4.3s. So it's very interesting to note that as well. Spectrogram is showing something weird for the P wave. Notice that? That's very odd. Some frequencies are missing right there. And if you'll notice right here, these are not low frequency tremor events. Notice. Too perfect. Notice, too perfect. Those are not any type of tremor events. That, I don't even know what that is, but that doesn't look seismic in nature. Then we see an aftershock right here. Let's go to waveforms. Blatant aftershock right there. Looks kind of weird though. It looks very, very strange. But going forward, that's an emergent surface event right there. Not seen much for a little while. Now let's scroll down. Going forward, not much, not much, not much. Those could be earthquakes. Do not know for sure. Don't want to look at that right now, but I want to look at this. Here's another aftershock right here. Let's see, at 1613, I wonder if this one was reported or not. Let's go all the way back. Was this 1613? Yes, it was. It was a magnitude 2.9 at 7.5 kilometers in depth. The next one was reported at 2233 on the same date. We'll find that in just a second. 2233, actually, that would be this one right here. But we'll get to that in just a second. Let's move forward and see if there are any unreported aftershocks. No, 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 no. Not seeing much, not seeing much. I mean, some of these might be earthquakes. Like, look at this. Look at that. You think that's real? Look at that. Look at the perfect frequency range. That is so weird. That is like the weirdest thing I think I've ever seen in my life. Look at that. Look at that perfect frequency range. Very, very strange. Very strange. Keep going, going forward, not seeing really many more aftershocks at all. So they did a pretty good job at recording most of the earthquakes. And then here's the reported aftershock right here. I believe this is magnitude 3.3. Again, lasted a good amount of time. Very interesting earthquake. As of the most recent data, as of 8.03 p.m. Pacific time, June 5th, 2019. Uh, let's see, is this an aftershock? We do see another aftershock just about an hour ago or so. A little less than an hour, but that's very strange. Look at the multiple increases in energy. It almost looks like multiple earthquakes striking over and over and over. And then we do see another aftershock right there. So seismicity is not over for this area, guys. Very, very intriguing. Very, very intriguing. And notice we do have some lower frequencies right there. That's strange. So what do you guys think about Southern California? What has been going on lately? Some very, very strange seismicity. You guys let me know what you think in the comment section below. I got to go. Got to do some stuff. Put the kids to bed because it is kind of late. Hope you guys had a great night. I will be back soon. God bless and see you later.